Hi, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to be doing a video about how I set up networking at an Airbnb rental. Now, I meant to do this video a long time ago. Uh, if you are uh, been uh, following the channel, uh, last year I did a, a video series of, of driving out here and setting up this, uh, this rental. We bought this house near Yosemite, and we intend to probably retire here in this area. But then there was a lot of other things that went into setting up a, a house as a rental. And I mean, having this house, we basically started from the, the ground up, you know, and just kind of furnished it ourselves. Um, but for networking, that meant that, that I could start from scratch and, and really um, build up a network here that would be appropriate to have in a rental. Now, this house was built in 1986, and so you're not, it's, it's not something that has like uh, in wall Cat 5 or anything like that, or, or Cat 6 even better. But, uh, um, and so basically everything was uh, kind of boiled down to, I wanted to find kind of a central place to have just really good Wi-Fi coverage. But you want to make sure that that Wi-Fi is really high quality and, and so forth. And so um, I ended up going for just a single base station to cover this house. Now the, the house is a, uh, about 2,300 square feet uh, over two stories. And so there is, it is like a decent sized home. Uh, fortunately though, there is a, a, here where I'm recording this video is kind of a very central area. It's right by the staircase. Um, and basically really easy access center of the house, like pretty much half the house is, is that way and the other half's that way. Um, and so it shows this, uh, shelf here actually as a place to have, um, the Wi-Fi equipment. In this house, I figured I would, ha I would start with one access point and see if Wi-Fi became an issue. Um, and so again, I went with Unify, um, here. And one of the reasons I went with Unify um, one, I had, like I said, I have the experience with their access points, but also I just, I wanted something that was going to be like something I can set up and really would be highly reliable. Um, and, and that's, and that's really important because when we're this, this rental is, I mean, we live 2000 miles away from here. And so I do not want something that could possibly fail while I'm not around and then try to find a way for somebody else to, to come in and fix it. And I know with Unify, I could trust that if I set, set it up properly, it's just going to keep running. So, um, so yeah, what did I do? I got, I got a, a dream machine and basically I, I went back and forth, um, because there's a cabinet right behind this wall or a closet behind this wall. Um, and part of me thought, you know, having it in, in a, a, a closet, uh, especially if it's a locked closet, because a, a, a base station and so forth isn't a cheap item, you know, and you don't want it to get stolen. Um, but the reason why I ended up putting it out in the main area is because if something was to happen, if, and like maybe the internet went down, um, if you have more of a tech inclined visitor, they might want to actually uh, plug and unplug the, the modem or router and so, and so forth. Um, and I wanted to have that accessible so that guests could do that if they needed to. Now, with Unify, I don't intend that ever to be an issue. And, it, and for the last uh, eight months or so, it's never come up. Like the, it, it, I've never had an issue where the Wi-Fi went offline that was due to an issue in this house. If the service goes out because the power's out or something like that. Whenever it comes back online, it, it, uh, the base station's ready for it. So uh, I, did, I chose to put it in a public space for that reason. Now, I didn't want it to be like out staring at everybody, you know, I didn't want it to draw attention to itself. And so I have it inside this cabinet where you can find it, it's there. It's not like, I mean, if you're looking for it, you're, you can plainly see it. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be screaming like, Hey, I'm a high tech object. That's small that, that you should steal me kind of thing. Now getting the service here when, once I chose this as a location and, and I, I knew I was either going to be outside here in this, this cabinet or in the closet behind this wall. Um, 
when I did that, I basically when I ordered the internet service, and up here we have the cable modem, uh, the cable packages aren't that fast, um, but I got the middle one, which is like 200 megabits only. Um, but uh, it's good for this area because we're up here in the mountains and we're in a, a town with only about 10,000 people, you know, so it's, it's, it's a small area and the fact even we're getting decent internet without having to go uh, satellite based is I'm happy with. So, um, but anyway, when they came in here, we, I basically told them, I'm like, hey, can you put uh, the cable port on this wall and then that way I could, I can access it from either side. Um, and so after they did that, I decided I wanted it on this side here. And so behind this cabinet, uh, the cable comes in, then cable modem and everything is there. Um, and so if you have that flexibility, usually if you're on the ground floor and with this house, we have a crawl space under the house. Um, and, and I mean, back home, we have a basement. And so uh, wiring is a lot easier with the basement, but with a crawl space, it's possible. Um, if you're on a solid foundation, then you're gonna have more issues. But for us, it was fairly easy. They got it here in the middle. Now, how did I set it up? Because uh, typically when you set up a network, especially if you, if you um, know something about networking, you wanna have um, all of your uh, IoT, the internet thing, the things, devices, your cameras and, and uh, uh, all, all like the, the small networking devices on your network that aren't computers. Um, you want all those on a separate network for security reasons. And, and that's because if those typically are, are known not to be as secure as a computer or a phone that has modern software updates or, or frequent software updates. Um, and so you put those on, you could put those on a separate network or a separate VLAN. Now I did that here, but from, uh, because this is a rental, the, the um, priority of networks was flipped. Um, so typically at home, you would have a network to put all your IoT devices on and you would make it so that that network was kind of like a lower priority than everything else. You don't want that network to be able to access um, any of your other VLANs. Um, with your computers on it, because if they uh, get broken into or something, then uh, like then they could be used to, to break into other devices on your network. But here it was different because the device devices here, the IoT devices here, are the ones that I actually trusted, um, and all the other devices are guests coming in and their devices that I don't trust. Um, and so basically, I set up two different VLANs um, and the IOT devices go on the priority VLAN and the guest network is, is the, the secondary VLAN. Um, and, and so, and, and the reason for that is because I don't want somebody who is staying at the house to be able to, uh, if they get on the Wi-Fi network, they should not be on the same Wi-Fi network as a security camera out in the, uh, in the front yard. Um, or as the, the door lock, which is a, a home kit uh, a, a keypad door lock. And so, um, and, and other devices too, I mean, the thermostat and everything else, like the, the, they should not be on that same network. Um, and so I set that up as a priority network and I allowed traffic from that VLAN to the guest network, but not vice versa. Um, and so if you're setting up firewall rules, make sure that the guest network does not, the, guest, the network for guests who are using your, your rental don't, can't hit the, the same network um, that devices like your door locks and everything else are on um, because you just don't want, you don't want to open that up. Now with the Unify, there was the other additional issue because there are ethernet ports on the back of it. Um, and most routers and uh, consumer-based routers have that as well. Um, and so I had to make sure that I switched all of those Ethernet ports to be on the same network as the guest network, um, because otherwise somebody could just come over with the Ethernet cord, plug in, and be on the, the privileged network with, with the devices that I don't want to have shared. So that's, that was something that I, I had to think through a little bit beforehand. Now, uh, one thing is, uh, for sure, I have like a, um, you wanna enable, it's, it's called multicast DNS. 
Um, and so that way, if you're on one network, um, and basically it's the same thing where I allow only it one way, but if, if I'm signed in on the privileged network, I still want to be able to get to all the devices on the non-privileged network, on the guest network. Um, and there are devices here that are on the guest network, and so I'll go, I'll, maybe that's, that's good for me to talk about now. Um, so one thing is that on the side here, you can see there's a printer. Um, and a printer was something I wasn't sure I wanted to offer here, but, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to set it up as a place not only for me to come and work occasionally, but if somebody else wanted to come and spend a week here and, and actually get some work done, um, a printer is something that can come in handy. Now, I wanted the printer to be accessible to the guests, though, and so that means that it goes on the guest network. Um, likewise, things like TVs and so forth, when you have streaming devices, or the TVs that we have here are, are streaming devices. Um, and we ended up going uh, with TCL um, TVs because, and, and the Roku ones, because they specifically, the Roku ones have a guest mode. Um, so that you can sign into all, if a guest comes in, signs in their Netflix account and everything else, it will automatically sign them out uh, on the date that they choose as their checkout date. Um, and that was really handy. Um, so, but th those TVs are on the guest network because I want them easily accessible to guests who want to maybe stream from their phone to the TV. Um, and so there are some devices like that in here that are specifically on the guest network and not on the, the prioritized network. Um, and so again, you just kind of have to work through what you want to have available to people who are staying at, at the place and what you don't want to have available. Um, the setup for the VLAN, I mean, it's going to be different based on the device you have. Um, and so on Unify, you set up, I set up two separate networks. There's actually two separate Wi-Fi uh, network names that it actually listens to. And so while we're here, we sign into the privileged Wi-Fi network um, that, that's uh, named for us, you know, and, and, uh, and everybody else, other guests would sign up just to the guest network. Now there is a password on the guest network and that's, uh, it's noted in the notebook when people check in. I try to choose a password that's easy to remember and maybe even just kind of a short message to the guest, like, like have a nice time or hope, hope you have a good trip or, or uh, happy vacation. You know, like all these things are like, like passwords that like kind of makes it so that the guest just as they know the password, it kind of wishes them well kind of thing. So. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, that's kind of what I went through to set up the network here at this rental. Um, it, we haven't had any issues with it so far. I guess I'll knock on wood for that. Um, I turned off automatic updating on the Unify uh, router, um, and I'll just update it every time that I come here to visit, which is a couple times a year. Um, and I think that's frequent enough updates. If there is a... Um, a, uh, a really uh, like a high priority update, then I can update it remotely, but I don't want to usually take that risk because if it's working well, then I don't want to give their a chance, especially if there's guests here at the time, I don't want to knock out their web, their Wi-Fi. The other thing is, is that I have the, the uh, router set up so that I can VPN in and so forth. And so if there's some kind of connection issue or I, I need to check something, uh, remotely, then I can always sign in over the VPN from wherever I am and have access to everything I need access to. So um, it's worked out real well, and I that that's how I would recommend setting the, let, something like this up. If you have any questions about set, the setup, or like if you're trying to figure out. Um, how you want to have your home set up for a network, uh, leave them in the comments below. I uh, hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one.